Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and welcome back. You're watching Women's AM with myself, Hasana, and on the panel joining me today, we have Sister Ayan and our special guest for today, Sister Noreen. Now, we mentioned earlier, we're so glad to have you here. Alhamdulillah. Sister Noreen, you work in a women's centre and I understand that you have a service where you support women through their pregnancy. What has that experience been like for you? Alhamdulillah, it's been a really, really good experience. I think what we do is we support women, particularly from ethnic minorities, um, women who can't speak English very well and women who have some barriers to, to accessing normal mainstream services. So the service was really set up to support women within that sort of area, trying to encourage women to attend things like antenatal classes and antenatal appointments and to provide language support. So we have like a peer model which supports women on a one-to-one -one basis. So women from the community who support the women in the community. And we work very closely with midwives um, and support women in the antenatal period. So we have a, a specialist antenatal class and alhamdulillah, over the last sort of 10 years, um, of uh, 12 years of the service, we've just seen women come in very sort of lacking in confidence and then they just grow, it's, you know, alhamdulillah. So it's been fantastic seeing so many women and uh, obviously they're having positive pregnancies and positive Absolutely. outcomes, which is, it's, it's beautiful, it's really nice. It's great to see. <laughs> um, sis, I know you say uh, that you've got two children, mashallah, yes. um, and uh, you had your kids after you uh, set this up. Yes. So d do you feel that your perception has changed in terms, because you know a lot of people say, oh, you don't know what it's like until you've had kids yourself. <laughs> yes. Did you find that to be true? No, absolutely. I think, I think when I first started the job 12 years ago, I was just got married, so obviously I, had, I didn't have any children, and I was trying to inform and educate women about pregnancy um, and then when I became pregnant myself obviously it was totally different and um, my perceptions <laughs> totally changed and I think um, I think once, once you become pregnant yourself obviously the changes that you go through um, only another sort of pregnant woman I think could probably understand that and the symptoms that you're going through because they're very strange um, and the body goes through a fantastic experience and I think at the end of the day when well, you're we'll actually talking about that yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and the the birth obviously when you have a baby and actually when you become a mum and when you become a mother I think alhamdulillah it's just a fantastic experience and I think it's so different to you know to, to what you would like you know any other time you can't really explain it till you are a mother so um, I think my empathy now is very much different with, with those women that we support. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to hearing your expertise on today's subject. So let's move now to today's topic. Let's go straight to her views where we're discussing the topic of pregnancy. You've had the exciting news that you're expecting a baby. So what does the next nine months have in store for you? It can be quite an overwhelming time, so it's best to take it one trimester at a time. But during the course of pregnancy, many women will experience emotional highs and lows, and it's often a physically challenging time, particularly for first-time mothers. What are some of the joys and difficulties that we will be facing during pregnancy? What are the best ways to deal with the challenges ahead of pregnancy for mothers to be. Well, are you a mother or a mother to be? You can share your experiences on this topic by calling in live to the show. The number will be appearing on your screens throughout this segment. Sister Noreen, I'm going to come to you first. I mean, what are some of the symptoms and signs, uh, early signs that you're pregnant? Um, can you talk us through some of these? Absolutely. I think the first thing a woman would notice that she hasn't had a period. And after that, she might feel slightly sick, nauseous. Um, she might feel... Um, emotions might be varied so they might go up and down um, her chest will, will probably be sore and enlarged so they're sort of the, some of the earlier symptoms um, some women have an implantation bleed which is a slight spotting of brown or pink blood it's very very light um, and that's when the actual fertilized egg it beds, it beds itself into the um, uh, into the womb so if someone has these signs what, what should they do the best thing to do is obviously to confirm the pregnancy and women can do that either by buying a pregnancy test um, which you can get at most supermarkets and, and chemists or they can see their GP to confirm that the recommendations that the GP or the chemist will, will probably give is for women to take folic acid um, folic acid is recommended before pregnancy and also the first three months of pregnancy if a woman is on any medication or she has a, um, a pre-existing condition such as diabetes, she should, she should definitely see her GP to talk through that and talk through the medication. Not to take, stop taking the medication, but to talk through the GP. So just have it. that discussion with your Absolutely. GP. I think that's, you know, that's kind of probably the best way to go forward. Yeah. Sister Ayan, you know, touching on this whole idea of, of GPs and the whole medical side of things, could you give an overview of what takes place in, in regards to the medical care during this first trimester? Gosh, you go through a whirlwind <laughs> of things. Honestly, sometimes it's just like, ah. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, so first you um, go to meet the GP, uh, just to get things done officially so that you've got the official from the GP, yes, you are pregnant, <laughs> um, inshallah, and um, that helps you to kind of work out, um, you know, when you conceived and hopefully work out when your due date is. Um, after that, you have a meeting with the midwife, uh, she'd come to visit you at home, and they talk through your medical history, your husband's medical history, and um, whether there are any sort of uh, genetic illnesses within the family that you know that that they should be concerned about for the baby so if there's any heart disease or kidney problems or anything like that so you go through all of these things and you get a book from the midwife that kind of follows your progress throughout your pregnancy um, and it's also used to communicate between midwife and doctor and whoever you're going to be seeing, inshallah. Um, also, uh, you get plenty of info on services, so you get a lot of pamphlets. You're going to have to make plenty of space for that. Uh, <laughs> Just loads, have a dedicated file. Yeah, then. <laughs> exactly. Lots and lots of pamphlets on the services available. On um, you know, if anyone is uh, sort of worried about sort of future issues and things like that, you you get sort of those sorts of things as well. Um, also, plenty of blood tests. You'll get them. You know regularly throughout you know your pregnancy just to sort of monitor that everything's balanced you've got the right amount of iron because a lot of women become iron deficient um, during pregnancy 12 week scan to confirm that you know your due date is sort of accurate <laughs> as possible um, more blood tests, more <laughs> urine tests, uh, monitoring your blood pressure because a lot of women have high blood pressure during pregnancy. Um, then inshallah, 20 week scan where you may or may not find out your, the gender of your baby and also make sure that everything developmentally is is okay and more checkups. So, I don't know if there's a few want to add any no, more to that. I think you're going to be fantastic. You gave all of the checkups there, definitely added a few extra in there as well. <laughs> I mean, roughly for a woman that um, has a normal care pathway, I mean, that if she hasn't got any complications or other problems she she sees a midwife around sort of ten times for the first pregnancy um, if it's a second pregnancy it's usually around seven times mm -hmm. yeah. that's kind of scattered throughout the course of the, th the three trimesters or more concentrated within one trimester um, it's scattered across mm -hmm. the the pregnancy but with the first trimester there'll be lots and lots of tests so lots of information given as um, as, as discussed and um, lots of information um, around what to do in pregnancy so the first booking appointment is around eight to ten weeks and that's really really important I think for women to attend uh, so they should really try and book in as quickly as possible and that appointment itself actually um, uh, will determine that the care pathway for that woman in pregnancy um, that um, the handheld notes are very very important all women should take them everywhere they go even if they're going on, on a trip or on holiday they should take their notes with them um, the scans themselves actually will detect abnormalities um, and that will be discussed with the family so pe families should really be prepared about that. Um, some women might see an obstetrician who is a specialist doctor um, that deals with women um, who have specialist conditions. In some places an obstetrician will be seen straight away but the majority of the time it's the midwife that takes care of, of women during pregnancy. Um, she might come into the home, she might see women in clinic. Um, if a woman ha can't speak English, and this is something that we support with our service, Please, please, um, I encourage women to book an interpreter, not to rely on family members, because I think sometimes with family members, if their English is broken as well, or they can't speak English that well. It could get lost in translation. Absolutely, yeah. and I Absolutely. think it's something that, um, the booking appointment particularly, because obviously you're going through family history, you're going through medical conditions, um, you're going through, lot, you're receiving lots of information, so it's really important that an interpreter's there. I think, you know, it's definitely an interesting discussion, and there are lots of kind of, you know, medical elements to be aware of, but of course there are some benefits, you know, uh, in Initially, I think for a newly pregnant woman, there are some interesting benefits as well. Sister Ayan, tell us a yeah, little bit more about these. Alhamdulillah, quite a few things going on for <laughs> sisters. <laughs> uh, alhamdulillah, you get free dental care and prescriptions um, uh, during your pregnancy and for 12 months after you've given birth. So you have to get the appropriate forms from your GP or your midwife. Um, if you've missed out on doing that during your pregnancy, you can still apply. Um, you just have to get the right forms, inshallah, and you'll get that, inshallah until your baby's a year old so that's that's something to look forward to sisters <laughs> free dental care um, there's also um, healthy start uh, which is a scheme that helps uh, mums get free milk or infant formula vitamins fruit vegetables um, 
for women uh, receiving benefits or who are on a, a certain income. Um, there's also uh, tax credits, so child tax credits um, and working tax credits to help people who, uh, you know, earn below a certain amount of money. So it kind of helps boost financially for, you know, the the responsibility that's uh, that's, uh, that's under uh, that's Absolutely. underway. Yeah. Um, there's also a statutory uh, maternity pay. So it's about 26 weeks um, during pregnancy. Uh, 26 weeks after pregnancy, you can have them. I think all in one go. Uh, best thing to do is usually tell your employers you are pregnant beforehand um, that you know you're going to end up taking maternity leave inshallah and that kind of covers 90% of your average uh, weekly earnings um, and uh, yeah and also there's maternity allowance so if you're pregnant and you've got a new baby but you don't uh, qualify for the maternity uh, pay so you can apply for a maternity allowance through your job center plus as well um, and there's also a paternity pay so fathers can take a bit of time off um, uh, and also uh, still get paid for that inshallah uh, and uh, there's statutory adoption pay so I, I didn't know wow. this before <laughs> so if you are um, adopting one of the parents can take uh, some uh, yeah. about the same time as maternity leave about 52 weeks or so, 22 weeks and then uh, sorry 26 weeks and then another 26 weeks and again 90 percent of your pay comes through uh, but it's only one partner at a time who can do this so you can't both just go off <laughs> un unfortunately <laughs> but at least one of you can <laughs> Jazakallah um, khair for that. Quite a comprehensive viewpoint. And I'm sure there's lots of information, or, uh, information available online Definitely. and things like that that people could check out. Sister Noreen, let's come back to you because, of course, you know, pregnancy is a time of changes. You know, the body will change. And I think women will go through a lot of different things during, you know, particularly that first trimester. It's definitely a time period where, you know, you're still adjusting and getting used to this whole idea of, of, of being pregnant. So what are some of the changes that we could expect? And also, how do you look after yourself during this time period? It's definitely something that's very important isn't it absolutely i think most women have gone through morning sickness will know how that feels it's morning sickness. Not really. <laughs> dreaded word i do want to talk about that <laughs> but morning sickness is it's one of those it's a feeling that a woman would get it usually starts around six weeks in pregnancy and it's feeling sick and it's feeling that a woman wants to vomit it was actually vomiting so it's it's either of those feelings and it doesn't happen just in the morning it happens all through the day and it can last uh, many weeks some women actually um, suffer it for about 20 weeks some women stop around 14 weeks so morning sickness is, a, is quite a um, a big issue I think with regards to early stages of pregnancy and there's lots of tips around how to alleviate that and the GPs and midwives will usually say things like um, if you have more uh, the sickness feeling in the first thing in the morning to get up very slowly to have a slice of toast or biscuit next to the bedside to actually eat that that will help to have small meals um, but frequently rather than have large meals um, to have um, cold food opposed to hot food and many women feel very sick when they're cooking uh, and preparing so try and get someone in the family who's very understanding to be able to cook <laughs> at those periods and also try to, to possibly avoid those types of spicy foods. Uh, pastas, breads and those sort of foods are quite uh, are recommended and are quite good to sort of alleviate some of those symptoms. Um, if women um, are get dehydrated that can cause a problem so the, the advice is to try and take little sips of water um, often, sort of every 15 minutes or so, rather than taking glasses of water, because that can make women feel very sick. Um, the other sort of, um, obviously, if the, 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 the sickness is still carrying on, then to see the GP or midwife, and they can give advice, maybe some medication. Acupuncture uh, pressure is something that's um, used, an acupressure pressure band, which can be put on the wrist. Um, and there's certain pressure points that apparently alleviate the nauseousness. Um, and there's no bad side effects have been reported so far just by just swelling of the hand some women have reported but bar that it's fine um, and um, ginger is also another one it's oh, a really good tip but with ginger it's not licensed in this country unfortunately even though we have it in our dinner and everything every day so the recommendations are really for pregnant women to go and buy ginger um, at a supermarket um, before they actually um, um, take that it's definitely very difficult for some women I mean I, I, I understand that they have